A lot of people don't think about this when transitioning to a homestead, and it is probably the single most important thing you can do on your homestead. Let's talk about that. So this thing that every one of you needs to do when thinking about setting up your homestead covers every homestead, every property, everybody is totally different. But if you don't do this, you're gonna run into some issues. And here it is, I'm talking about planning out the actual physical things on your homestead. Now, you're thinking, what are you talking about? Well, let me tell you why that's important. So all of us are going to have a limited amount of space to work with. And even those of you who have big ranches or can afford to buy a lot of land really need to think about how to lay out and plan the physical structures and the things like your garden or whatever on your homestead. Let's talk about a well, for example. Now our property came with a well, but if you're drilling a well yourself, you need to be strategic about it. Of course, it's wherever the water is, but after you locate that water, what are the best positions to place your garden, your greenhouse, your barn, whatever else you need to provide water to, like your house? You're going to need to have those in somewhat of a close proximity because it's going to be easier for the pumps, it's going to be, you know, less distance to pump the water. All those things are very important. Now, something we had experience with and we did incorrectly in the first place was our fruit trees. And it's important to have a good proximity to your home with your fruit trees. Your orchard should be fairly close. We made a mistake of putting our orchard on our other property over there through our forest and to tend to the trees. They were out of sight, out of mind. We didn't give them the attention that they needed. Now, maybe that's my fault with not planning out and writing a schedule of when to take things, but all of the fruit trees next to the house here, all of these over next to the solar panels and all that next to our greenhouse and our garden over here, I am constantly staring at them so I can see if there's any diseases. And the majority of our fruit trees on this side are much, much healthier because we have eyes on all the time. So that's something that needs to be planned out. So then of course your garden. Now farming is obviously different, but this garden feeds our family. It's not being used to sell to anybody else. So this garden here is close to the house. The distance I have to walk to harvest is very, very short. And I did that for a very specific reason because I knew that if I had to travel a further distance like I would have with the fruit trees on the other property, then I wouldn't care for it as much. I wouldn't see it every day. And to harvest for a meal for dinner uh, straight out of the garden on a day, it's way easier to have it very, very, very close to your house. And that's gonna come in very handy when we have to harvest big amounts and take them right into our new prep kitchen, which we just built onto the back of the house that's coupled with our solar control room. And of course, there's the greenhouse. Now, this is actually closer to the house than our garden, a few feet. It's right next to the garden, but we had to think about the orientation for the sun, and it is really convenient if we wanna grab something really quick for dinner and then run 50 feet back into the front door of the house. We wouldn't want our greenhouses a quarter mile from the house because we probably would not pay attention to them as much. Now, farmers are different. I'm talking about you, the homesteader, the, ho the homesteader who's just growing food for your family. That's different than somebody who's doing a small farm, market garden, something like that. Ooh, that's so pretty. It smells good. So keeping your infrastructure tight, like I talked about with the distance for your water to travel from your well or your rainwater reclamation is important, but it also comes into play when you're laying electrical lines for new structures. Now our barn up there is 100 yards away from the house and it has its own transformer. It's still on grid. Our house will be shortly off grid with our solar system over there. But I wanna run from our main panel in the house a line up to the barn. 
that's gonna cost some cash. It is definitely less than doing a brand new solar system for the barn, but I need power in that barn. All the woodworking tools are up there, the well runs off the barn, so I need power for that. So having that closer to the house would have been better, but we bought this property the way it was. So I'm excited that we have it and blessed that we have it. But when you are laying out your property, I want you to think about that. What is the best placement for your outbuildings and for all of your small structures, for your gardens, for your greenhouse, solar panels, everything like that. Because definitely those solar panels, that's about the only spot they could go on the property and get the best sun. So friends, why do I make these videos? Why do I tell you these things? Well, it's because I want your homesteading life to be easier. I wanna go over our experiences and share with you what failed and what worked so that you don't make the same mistakes we did. And so that will help alleviate some of the burden on you, especially you first time homesteaders. You're coming out, you don't know where to start, you don't know everything you need. That's what we're here for. So it's even important when it comes to things like your rainwater reclamation. So this side of the barn doesn't get as much drainage as the other side. The other side of the roof is way larger, but this side is higher, so we utilize this side for the gravity feed down to the garden and the greenhouse. And even places where you put coops like this, now this one is mobile so I can move it wherever I want, but it's kind of in the way right now of me getting straight into my barn with my truck and trailer. So they've got to get out of the way and move to a better location. I didn't plan that out as well as I should have. Now the majority of our infrastructure is within about two acres of our eight acre property. And that makes things much cheaper because you see that propane tank over there, it's close to the house. If I had to put that any further away, it would have cost like $4 a foot to continue to move it further and further away from the house. And for the PV lines coming from our solar to the back of the house, I didn't want to go much farther because then you're going to start to get pretty expensive with wire. And for those of you who haven't moved out onto your country homestead yet, I want you to plan out and actually physically draw out what you need on your homestead and where it would be located in relation to one another. Because I guarantee that will help you out when you're looking for a property or even if you already have one and you're building a house. It's site planning, part of my profession, architecture, is super important. It's important too because of natural features like this dry creek on our property splits our property in two. So I've had to work around that in several different ways and plan for maybe another bridge crossing, you know, where the fencing goes, all that kind of stuff. These things are important to know. And if you need help with that, I still do practice architecture. You can click at the top of the screen to see one of our videos of our original off-grid home design. You can email me at our business email, which is found in the about section of our main page, if you need help. We have a lot of helpful videos for you here on the channel. Go click this video right here, which is our whole series on installing our solar system. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time.